Hello, everyone. I'm Sid Kuller, and I manage the Network Technology Administration and Security Post Degree Diploma and the Network and Security Advanced Certificate IT programs at the Vancouver Community College. I have with me today a special guest, Anthony Green. Anthony is an IT professional, an industry and subject expert, and an educator who loves to help students find their passion in cybersecurity. Anthony is also the Vice President of ISACA Vancouver. ISACA is an international professional association focused on information technology governance. So let's hear from Anthony and discover his insights in this industry. Welcome, Anthony. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you, Sid. Appreciate it. I am excited to talk all about cybersecurity here today. Great. So, Anthony, I, I, I wanted to ask you some, some questions and I wanted to, you know, have our, our learners also know a bit more about uh, the, the network administration and security field and the career options. So, uh, I'll begin by asking you, what got you interested in network security or what drew you to this field? That's a great question. I love this question because essentially, um, I was always a tech guy growing up. Uh, when I went into school, I took a program that taught you a little bit about everything when it comes to IT. And as soon as I took my first cybersecurity fundamentals course, I was hooked. Um, I was amazed at how easy it is to hack because there's not enough people that know how to defend. And that really got me very interested. And I haven't looked back since. As soon as I took that course, I just realized that's going to be my specialty. That's where I want to go towards. And since then, the industry has only been growing and growing uh, with more and more teams or more and more companies getting hacked every, every year. That's very interesting. So uh, talking about the, the field of cybersecurity, could you please share with our audience, what is it like to work in cybersecurity? Sure. So cybersecurity, it, um, it really depends on the industry that you're in. Uh, meaning that uh, cybersecurity in the fintech, so financial technology space, is very different than cybersecurity in the government space, which is very different than cybersecurity for, say, um, you know, critical assets like uh, port or uh, government infrastructure. So there's a difference between government, you know, corporate office and the, you know, the stuff that's actually running your electricity. So there's a big difference um, in depending on which industry you go into, uh, some being very casual, you know, you work your nine to five, while some being you're on uh, response 24 seven. And right now there's actually lots of contractor and flexible roles as well. So in cybersecurity, there's really, um, cybersecurity, if you're interested, there's a type of job or a corporate culture for everyone. Wonderful, that's so nice to hear and I can, I can imagine how critical it would be to uh, fortify and secure our some of our critical infrastructure on on which we depend. Yeah, no, exactly. And where we're right now, there's we're seeing more and more attacks in the world uh, where in critical infrastructure is being um, targeted. Uh, you know, recently last year we saw in the states where there were um, hackers that tried to poison uh, entire counties drinking waters. In the past, what we've seen is we've seen government attacks. For example, there's an attack called NotPetya, where the Russian government actually attempted to take down uh, Ukraine's infrastructure and did so successfully for quite a few days. That's quite, uh, quite uh, interesting and also a little scary. Um that we are exposed to all those uh, potential vulnerabilities. Okay, Anthony, so I've heard this many times that technical skills are key, especially in a field such as information technology uh, and in administration and security. So how does one go about learning these skills? What is, what is the most effective way to learn these skills? Absolutely. So when I hear technical skills, I usually think two different um, I usually think two different kind of subjects. One, it comes to software technical skills. So learning how to use the different softwares. And two, which I would say is more important is understanding how everything works fundamentally. So how does the internet work or how is a firewall supposed to work versus going in and actually 
knowing how to use a certain software vendor's firewall, right? So there's, um, those are essentially two different type of technical skills. Um, the fundamentals that I was talking about, which is learning how everything works um, from a holistic point of view, that is best done through schooling, such as a program like this, uh, where you have, where you're taking maybe a two to four year course, uh, so you're taking several courses in a two uh, to four year program, where you're learning a whole bunch of things that go on top of each other and build out to this uh, information technology knowledge. However, if you go into the more certifications, um, sorry, the software area, you can simply just buy a course from you know, the firewall vendor and they will teach you how to use that specific firewall and then um, you'll know how to use that firewall. That's essentially the technical skills on that side but you still need the fundamental uh, technical skills before you go into software. It's very important to understand why a firewall is important before we figure out how to use one. The way you put it, you know, Anthony, that's such a pr good practical advice. I'm, I'm so happy I asked you that question. And uh, I know you touched upon this a little bit uh, uh, earlier about the career opportunities that are available uh, in, in cybersecurity. If, uh, would you like to add something? Uh, what kind of opportunities uh, are or will be available in, in network administration or security domain? Sure, absolutely. And um, before we go into that, let me start by talking about what type of domains there are in cybersecurity usually. Well, there's usually three domains there and they're growing. So now there's more, um, but I like to generalize it in three just to not keep it too, um, too confusing. Uh, first is blue team. This is what we're learning in. This is mostly what we're learning in uh, this program where it's how do we defend, right? How, what is happening? How do we see what's happening? How do we defend? How do we remediate problems? Then there's also red team. Red team is the attackers. How do we hack? Now, it's also important to know how to hack if you're defending because you need to know what type of attacks to defend against. So we do learn a little bit about the red team in this program. However, it's not, it's not super in-depth that you'll, uh, at the end, be able to become a hacker. Um, and then there's also compliance. And compliance is more where um, you know, the government says you need all these different security rules. Uh, compliance is the way is essentially somebody that's able to gather all that information for somebody to make sure, um, sorry, gather all that information for the company to make sure that they are compliant with government standards. This program is more towards blue team and that's very with a little bit of red team. So you just enough to be able to understand blue team. And that's really the most important one because that's, I think, where most opportunities are coming in. Uh, red team right now is stuff that you can just learn online. If you're interested, you can Google how to hack, but blue team and understanding why those hacks work is completely different and how to prevent them. Um, it's a big difference between knowing how to run a script and hacking someone than actually knowing what that script does and how you can prevent that from working going forward. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly what we're going to be learning uh, in this program. Awesome. Uh, I love the analogies, you know, that cybersecurity uh, field uses the use of colors, red and blue. Uh, one is a attacker, one is a defender. That's, that's really easy to understand. Yeah. And now these days they have like purple and other things where certain people are attackers and defenders, but that's why I want to keep that aside. Let's just say red, blue and governance. Perfect. For compliance. Thank you. And You've uh, already uh, had so many uh, students and, and trainees in your career. And uh, from what I can tell is that they, they love your classes. You know, they, they really like the way you, you inspired them. So uh, let me ask you, what, what inspired you to teach or become an educator? Thank you. That, that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. So earlier during this uh, interview, I mentioned that, you know, I got into an IT program, and then as soon as I learned, as soon as I got into that cybersecurity course, I was just hooked. That's essentially what is inspiring me to teach, knowing that I could potentially be that person for others. Uh, if I could show them what security really is, the fundamentals of security, 
maybe there's going to be somebody that's going to say, actually, this is exactly what I want to do with my life. And if I can have, uh, and that's what I guess inspires me to teach, knowing that I could potentially have bring more cybersecurity experts into the field. Awesome. Uh, talking about showing, showing, showing the students, I was wondering if you know uh, you could do a quick demonstration about a piece of software or technology that you use for your for your classes for for teaching. Sure, absolutely. So. This is uh, one of the softwares that we'll be looking at, um, and this is called Let's Defend.io. This software essentially is a, a simulation of what you would be seeing as a blue team if you're looking at um, a security operation center. Like you can see that my background here in Zoom, um, these are the type of people that would be monitoring alerts every day, seeing what's wrong. So this would be kind of an alert that we would receive. And in this class, the plan is to learn enough to be able to understand what this attack is, right? Ransomware detected and what, how we can investigate it and potentially what we could have done to prevent it. So here it gives us a whole bunch of information without knowing what to do, you may be overwhelmed. However, like in this class, we'll be going deep into it. For example, we can say, okay, we see that this is ransomware. We know ransomware is encrypting files. So we need to check out this guy's computer. We need to check out the computer to see if any files have been encrypted. So then we can go to endpoint security. Um, now we go and look up that computer. And from here on, we can see his browser history. We could see the process list, things that are running, and we can see which one of these will be that um, ransomware uh, program. Now, all of this might not make sense right now, but this is essentially the type of stuff that a lot of the blue team does, which is they receive alerts, then they triage, which is uh, go and look at the information alerts, and then figure out um, whether this is an actual incident, or whether this may be a false positive, or something along those lines. Um, so that's a little bit of a uh, example of the type of analysis of the blue team type of things that we'll be doing uh, in my class. Splendid. This is so fascinating. You know, I, I, I'm i going to one day get uh, into your class and maybe I can learn some things about, uh, about being part of the blue team. It just makes me feel so excited. And this also ties in with your earlier point about uh, knowing and learning the software, how to use that, and also understanding, having a good in-depth understanding of how the computers uh, talk to each other, how they how they work, how security works, some of the some of the back end, you know, stuff. So this is this is really uh, helpful. Exactly. Yeah, this will rather than just looking at it from kind of seeing, oh, yeah, this is an event uh, or this is an attack. We're actually going to go look into what uh, how these tools would actually analyze these attacks and get a little bit of that hands on experience. Hands-on experience, yes, that's the word. Uh, that's basically our, our program. Uh, uh, one of our program objectives is to be able to provide uh, hands-on training to students so that they feel equipped, well-equipped to go out and get into, into making a career in this field. So Anthony, uh, I wanted to just ask you, what advice do you have for someone who is interested in pursuing a career in network administration or network security? Great question. The advice is start as soon as possible. Um, what do I mean by start? Uh, remember when we were talking about fundamentals, join a program similar to the program here at VCC, um, but also there's tons of resources online that you can start even before the program to get yourself prepared. Um, my main advice is to get started sooner rather than later because cybersecurity is growing. And the quicker you can get um, ahead, the more easier it will be for you to get jobs going forward, right? The other thing that I will say, and this one um, is a little bit unorthodox, um, but it's networking. And what I mean by networking is actually meeting people, not, not the IT networking, which is very important as well. That's why we need to learn that first, but also networking on the people side, which means going out, uh, going to cybersecurity events, going to even IT events and just meeting people um, all around because people are always looking for cybersecurity, you know, even entry-level positions. 
Um, so it's always great to have your name out there. And so if you have something like an education, as well as going uh, any education in um, IT or cybersecurity, as well as going out to events and having and meeting people, you will be the first one that once a cybersecurity position opens that they're going to call and say, hey, I know you finished this program. I've seen you at these events. I know you know your stuff. Are you, uh, are you available to work for us? And that has happened um, very often, especially with entry-level positions. Wonderful. And I know as a vice president of the ISACA Vancouver chapter, you, you lead and, and host a lot of uh, similar networking events. And so, so you have a lot of experience, you know, uh, looking at it from that perspective where professionals and aspiring professionals are, are connecting with each other. Exactly. Yeah, it's at ISACA, we have like monthly events and a lot of them are student oriented as well, as well as professionals. We try to keep the talk simple enough that it's enough that students can understand as well as um, enough value to bring professionals. And this allows us to have this networking experience because we have food and everything and people end up wanting to talk to each other because if you're passionate about cybersecurity, a lot of people in the cybersecurity field are also very passionate and interested in it. Uh, so I wanted to round this up uh, and ask you about uh, uh, you know, the future. What's, what's, what's the futuristic uh, outlook that you have on the security? Is it going to be something that we saw in Minority Report? Is that going to become a reality? Or, or where, where is this heading? So cybersecurity is a cat and mouse game, really. It's um, what does that mean? It means that first the attackers hack something, then the defenders fix it, then the attackers find out how to hack it again. What I think security is going to turn into is it's going to be an augmentation of the blue team. So people like us uh, who are defending, um, tools are going to get more and more advanced, and it's going to end up being um, us using these very advanced machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data tools to analyze even the smallest cybersecurity events, because I think things are just going to keep maturing and maturing. But I don't think there's going to be any lack of job opportunities. I think, if anything, there's only more and more positions being available. I know in the past uh, three years specifically, there have been an influx of entry-level positions um, specifically within, uh, I know, within Vancouver and within Canada as well. That's great to hear about the job opportunities that await uh, not just only now, but also five years and 10 years from now. Um, and thank you for sharing all those insights with us, Anthony. It's been, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. It was my pleasure. Thanks a lot, Sid. Okay. Thank you, Anthony.